guys. It's the 24th of May. Uh, we're having a nice morning, about 4 in the morning. Uh, got a uh, thermometer check over there. It was 20 Celsius or about 68 degrees. It's, it's kind of nice out here this morning, really cool. Roosters just started crowing uh, when I first came out and was doing my walk this morning. Um, not a peep. Uh, dogs weren't even barking this morning. It's, it's really pleasant to go for a walk in this neighborhood because if I just take it nice and easy and don't don't make a lot of noise when I'm walking, uh, it doesn't bug them. And I haven't seen uh, any dogs, you know, out dog crap or anything like that. So the flashlight will always get them barking. I hate to have it. I actually have a red lens that I can put over my flashlight and, and it seems to keep them a little quieter but we did have a fellow uh, walk this dog over here the dang thing I we were standing there watching it took a dump so I walked up uh, behind him and just handed him a bag <laughs> he looked at me he said, what's this for well it's for your dog poop you gotta pick that up that's the that's the law here so he, he picked it up he, he picked it up and uh Wanted to give it back to me. I said, no, <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, it'd be nice that we don't have to have that around here. And everybody's like it. Nobody, nobody likes to step in a dog bite. But um, we had our friends over yesterday. Didn't get, didn't get any, uh, any video that we're going to put out on it. But uh, we, we went up. Uh, we were looking at... Um, some of the shops around here. Uh, Mumu's sweetheart was here, so they stayed with the kids. And uh, and we went out, we were looking at some of the shops here. Uh, my buddy comes through here uh, quite a bit. His wife's uh, family lives not too far up from here. You just go through Padre Garcia and hang a left. And he said there's some really nice beaches over there too. So they're planning on coming back. Um, where they're going to stay, stay over the weekend, and then we'll go there. We'll take us all, and we'll go there. Uh, now, yesterday I went out, uh, went up to the store. We had we had stopped at S and R, got a, got a pizza. I made spaghetti, but but uh, we had bought a pizza anyway. They get pretty good pizzas up there for the money, and uh, so we had a root beer. I don't like the kids to get a lot of pop, but we had some root beer and. I just bought one and let the kids split it, so we put Maddie's in the refrigerator. And of course, uh, he was napping. And then when he got up, somebody hit, nobody knows who, but somebody drank it. So he didn't get any. So I thought, I'm going to take him up to the store. And I'll get him a little, one of them little cans of the mug root beer, whatever brand it is. It's the, it's the one we get. There's only one of them here that doesn't have high fructose in it. It's got corn syrup in it. I don't think it's mug. I think it's something else. But uh, we always read the labels, and I have the kids read them too. I show it to them, look, you don't want that stuff. And uh, so, but I took them up to the store. It's right next to the police station. Uh, we got out of the car with our masks on, and, uh, you know, there was, there was a bunch of cops there. They had like a checkpoint thing going because it was a Sunday. All in there. They're, they wear camo here. They wear a full camo suit. Those poor guys must be real hot. Uh, and the way their thing was, they had a, they had a little sun pavilion there but uh that's that's right where it was and they they seen us getting out i even waved and we went right into the store uh with maddie and got his root beer nobody not a peep not a peep from anyone we did see a lot of kids out when, when we were riding around so that was a real good thing uh you know it seems like it's lighting up here a little bit but um Another thing I saw, I saw this on Facebook, and the, and the guy, it's an XPEC site, and this is something I didn't know, and you guys, this might be of interest to you guys who live here, because it's definitely different than in the United States. But uh, they put out some information, and I'm going to start watching that. I joined this, I've joined the XPEC site, so now I get stuff on a regular basis. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some stuff I find interesting out there, but... Uh, when you live in the States, if, if somebody has a tree or something that overhangs onto your property, you can cut it off. And if it has fruit on it, it's your fruit. <laughs> Not so here in the Philippines. 
them, okay? Uh, the way the law is written here, and the guy had the law on there. I'm going to see if I can find it again and post a link link to that. But uh, if the tree, let's say it's a banana thing, comes over, it's not yours. You could you could ask him to cut it out of your yard. You know, most people wouldn't do that here anyway. But uh, or you can you can ask him for the fruit, and they might say, "Yeah, sure, take it," because it's how Filipinos are. They'll probably say, "Sure, go ahead." But uh, most Filipinos will, just won't take it. They know they will not take it, and you can't. You're not to cut it. They cut it. And then the other thing is now there's a difference now if the, you have roots coming over into your property then you can cut them you know if you got if there's a big tree and the roots are coming over then you can cut them but i just thought that was interesting how different it is here compared to the states you know but uh pretty cool but uh, nobody's nobody's up yet nobody's even stirring uh at the house just me like I say, I had my I had my good walk out this morning. It was so cool. I was able to kind of power walk. I didn't need I didn't need a real warm uh, shirt on. There's not a real big breeze right now, just a slight one. And this wasn't cold like when I was in Carmona. So I just put on my nice, nice shirt. And just took a walk. Didn't even get sweaty this morning. Pleasant walk. Went as fast as I could with this back. It's uh, it loosens up as I go, which is you know real good thing. Yesterday we had, uh, I'm glad our buddy was over because they carried the water in and and uh, his daughter's uh, boyfriend was here and that was real nice they carried it in because uh, I just don't want to pick up heavy stuff and carry it anymore. I don't even hardly pick the kids up. It just puts too much pressure on this back. I started out this morning, I, I got up pretty early. You know, I woke up, it must have been a little bit after two and uh, I just went into a stretch for about an hour and fell back asleep for a little bit, but stretched real good. And then when I got up, I just came straight out and did my, did my walk to loosen this up. And it uh, just fantastic. It's so pleasant here to walk. I walked the entire length of this place all the way up to the end, zigzagged all back through, and not one single dog barked at me. Not one. And there, there were some out there. The, the one dog that's up on that thing, I was uh, the next street over. And I, and I had my my uh, flashlight. I didn't want to I didn't want to wake him up and get him to start barking. But he jumped up and he was looking right at me. And you know they have a light there up above him. And he didn't bark. He said, "Okay, I guess he, they're getting to know me. I guess because they see me out in the morning." And maybe also because I was over a street. If I would have been on their street, I, I don't want to go by and start waking up the whole neighborhood when I walk. But dang it, some of these some of these. Uh, pups that you know i hope they all get used to me i really do that they just stop barking in the morning but it was very pleasant it was the first morning i, I had a walk where I, I wasn't barked at all you know all morning no loose dogs around so that's really good and uh we had uh didn't have any rain yesterday i, I had put some more of that uh uh, what, is, what the heck is that? The uh, borax and stuff. I just poured some. We we spot treated an area because we had a whole pile of the red ants. Not the, they're not as big as the carpenters. They're about halfway, but they they kill anything they can get. I mean they they got a, they had a wasp. They were dragging a wasp away uh, back down to their nest. And I thought, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna spot treat them because those little son of a guns they get on you. They bite the heck out of you. I mean, it's like a, it feels like a bee sting, and uh, you know, I just put my hand down. I didn't even, I wasn't paying attention. I put my hand down, and I had about. The, you can see. The, I don't hope you can see that little mark on there. But uh, a couple of them got me, and they they were stuck. They were they were like, they had their pinchers stuck in me. I had to pick them off. So, <laughs> so, so I spot treated that area, and I'll tell you what, they were dragging a, a, a wasp up over the wall to go back out to their nest. And I spot treated that, and I put a drop right on right on the wasp. They carried that to the nest, and then the other, the ones that were coming back and forth through there, uh, they went straight to that. They, I did just put a little bit. I got it in the measuring cup, and I just poured a little tiny bit in there, and they went straight to it. So, and then when I when I checked. Now they may have been done hauling away their food and all that, but but uh, it was amazing that the uh, I spot treated the other side too, and both of them were in the sun. But it was amazing how much of that was sucked up because there were so many of them red ants. But uh, the black ants are almost non-existent now. I'll see one here and there, 
the little tiny ants uh, were getting, they're flying in now. I have to keep the lights out, the white lights, like this light right here, these real white ones, they come to that. If I put these yellow ones on here, no problem. So what I'm going to do for early in the morning for me, when we put that living room light in, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put a yellow light in there. Uh, that way, in the morning, I can have a light on without having thousands of these. I, I, I don't like to start the vacuum cleaner up to suck them up. But these things, they fly in, they land on the walls or the cupboards or the pots or something, and then they drop their wings. And they're, the little, they're little tiny ones. And uh, thousands of them, guys. It's amazing. But they come for this white light. Uh, they don't bother the yellow one. I got yellow ones up on our balcony in here. And... Uh, so I'm gonna, and of course I got the yellow on the back too. But we did our house, I showed you the pictures the other day, we did our house with uh, daylight instead of, everybody's got these white lights on the house. And I, I just don't like the look of it. I'm the only one in here with the daylight color. You know, it's more of a yellowy, like the old incandescent bulbs. And I, it just looks better to me. And then of course these yellow lights, when I had the lights turned on yesterday at night, it, the house looks good. Our friends got here after, uh, it was just a little, little bit after light, they came on the motorbikes. Um, I had went up to the guard shack and told the guard that they're going to be coming in, gave them the names and told them they're going to, these are the motorcycles they're going to be on. And well, when they got here, there was, uh, it was like right in the shift change. And uh, the guys like wasn't going to let them in. And then the other guy came back, I think he was going to the can or something. He says, oh, no, no. It, it, Mr. Shaw said he could, they could, they could come in. So that was that was really cool. They're getting to know us pretty good. Uh, the guards are just super guys, and I like the fact that they're not letting anyone in. I just love that. I don't want anyone coming in here. You know, it's nice that the kids can get out and play. I don't, you know, I would be worried about a snatcher or something. Uh, you know, I've been seeing on here uh, crimes against foreigners are, are going up in this country. Uh, I, I didn't see it in the newspaper. This was from uh, from one of you guys that's hit me on Messenger. Uh, it, was a, it was a new one. I, I saw it on Facebook and, and uh, I had seen there was a few comments on there. So I hit the button. I can't, I can't think of the name right now. I got to go back to it. But uh, one of his friends got... Uh, uh, severely beaten, pistol whipped, uh, you know, along with the wife, and all their money was stolen. They had they had like twenty nine thousand or something, and a watch and and stuff like that. And it was uh, it was a setup through a tricycle driver that, and uh, you know, it's not good. They just took them took them down the down the road and just started wailing on them. And uh, a lot of people here they don't get involved. I remember. Uh, uh, years ago I was inside of a building and uh, two guys on a bike just pulled up to a whole group of people that were standing there waiting for a jeepney pulled out a gun and just started taking everyone's purses and stuff and jumped on the bike and drove away and they just handed them the stuff well what are you going to do I guess you know in the states he'd have got shot in the face but here uh, you know nobody carries the firearms and so what do you get the criminal had one <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had one, and he robbed all those people standing there. <laughs> you know, I just don't, I don't understand the mentality of these people that don't want you to have a gun. You know, the government's got them. They got them all over the place, but they don't want you to have one to protect yourself. Personally, that guy who pulled up on a gun, jumped off the motorcycle, somebody should have pulled out a, a firearm and shot them both. Right in the face, both of them. You know, you don't do that kind of stuff. That's, that's a mad dog. And, uh... As far as I'm concerned, you need to just exterminate them off the earth. <laughs> That's my opinion. You don't go be able to stick a gun in people's face and rob them. You know, and if, if people had guns, that that would go that goes away. I remember a long, long time ago, one of the one of the first states that had to carry stuff was Florida because their crime their crime was ridiculous, and all of a sudden you had people carrying. You know, and the crime went down. It it dropped real quick. It, you know, they had, of course, they had the crime statistics. They'll try to do them because of the dopers and stuff like that. They're going to shoot each other and kill each other anyway. But uh, the crime on regular citizens and all that quit. And uh, I remember there was a, a little old lady we knew. Uh, I lived in a bad neighborhood when I was young, and she would she would walk there. People people carried, you know, a lot of people carried where I lived, and. Uh, 
she didn't want to. But the criminal, she'd walk out through the middle of the night, two in the morning, uh, you know, doing just doing her walk and stuff, and she wasn't even worried about it because she said, oh, even though she wouldn't want to carry, she said they don't know that I'm not carrying. That's the good thing about the concealed carry, you know, that the, you know the, the criminal would have to guess. So, but uh, there's there's people up to no good, and the way they the way they've smashed the economy here, I, I can see the crime will go up. Uh, I know when this president came in, he got rid of a lot of the dopers, and some people got really ticked about the whole deal. But just in my little area, I don't know about the rest of the country, but in the area that we lived in, the crime went down to zero. Because it was the dopers getting it. They needed money, they didn't have really have a job. And then our friend, her brother was a barker there and a doper, and he looked, he was aged badly. and. You know, and when that when Duterte came in and, and said, you know, turn yourself in, you know, or we're going to get you, and he turned himself in, and guess what? He changed his life around. Uh, he he looks twenty years younger. He's not doing any of the dope. He's got himself a nice girlfriend. Uh, you know, and he lives somewhere down around here now. I don't know where where exactly he's at, but uh, I liked the guy, and I knew he was a doper, but I still liked him. Came from a good family, but. People get stuck on this drugs, and it's a shame. And it's here, guys. It's it's uh, it's here just like everywhere else. And that's a royal shame. It's a it's a scourge. That's why I really liked uh, uh, Du Thirty when he came in because that was his big deal to get rid of that. And I personally think that's something. It leads to so much crime, guys. I mean, it it it, it just. That's where that's where your crime's coming from mostly. These guys who want to do this dope, you know, they got plenty of stuff that's legal. <laughs> you want to get a bus, go drink a beer. You know what I mean? I remember when I was in the call center, so you know, people would come in for a job application, and I could smell I could smell reefer on them. I could smell it. Who in their right mind would go to a job interview smelling like that? You know, all glassy-eyed and all that. A couple of them came in with sunglasses. You come into an office, but that's a that's a red flag for me right away. That's a no hire for sure. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Their minds are altered. That's the, that's what I'm trying to get the point at. They're they're messed up. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Uh, we pretty much got everything cleaned up yesterday. I got a, I just got the one pot. Uh, my wife cooked some also uh, for lunch. She made that synagogue stuff. Man, I love that stuff. We we got some really nice beef here. We were at the uh, S and M, the big supermarket. We had an S and M that we went at Walter Martin in our old neighborhood, but it was a small one. This one's a, the big one up here at the mall. And uh, a lot of stuff in there. I didn't haven't found sour cream or cottage cheese yet, but but. Uh, they had really nice meat in there. They had a lot of nice meat. The only thing I didn't like was I bought some T-bones, but they, they, they're this thick. Well, that's a roast. <laughs> you know, that should have been at least cut in half so you can fry them. But I, I did get a few T-bones and I, I cooked them up in the uh, uh, the convection cooker. We have one of those little. They call it a turbo cooker. It's a convection, basically a little convection cooker. And uh, I put the meat up on a rack and did it like a roast, and it came out fantastic. It came out tender as can be, just a little bit of salt and pepper. So uh, we, we'll probably get them again. We just got to cook them a different way. I want to get a big time. I want to get a barbecue grill out here. I want to. I want to get a place cabinet for the tools. So all them dang tools I brought. That whole that whole area under the plastic. I got to get those put in a put in a big stand. When we were out yesterday, we saw some nice cabinets. Uh, I saw one that would have been perfect. If it would have been just a little bit bigger. <laughs> it had adjustable shelves in it, metal cabinet, lock and door, and. Uh, sitting it right over there and that would it would have been great but it was just too small uh, but we'll, we'll go back we'll keep watching the place uh, the uh, you know I wanted to tell you guys also when you see something you better buy it because when we were in this store uh, we saw this uh, set for it, it was just a little bit too big for upstairs but I thought you know second thought I said boy that would be a really nice set of furniture for down here because it had a, it had a nice table and it had these really comfortable chairs that were you know they weren't going to break 
uh, you know, that some of the stuff this store had it was cheap, cheap stuff. But this was a real nice one, the way it was made. It was a square tubed, uh, looked like mandrel bent, and it was bolted together good. And it was sturdy. I was putting my weight on it, wiggling around, thinking, okay, these things sit flat on the floor. This could, these chairs will last a long time. And a nice table. The only thing I didn't like, it had a glass top, but we've had glass top stuff at the last house, and we never broke it, so... But that would be nice out here. And when we went back, gone. Asked the same guy that was in there, you know, hey, the table, oh, that's old. Are you going to get it again? Oh, no, sir. I mean, just straight out, nope. Nope, that was a one-time deal. So when you see something in this country, grab it. If you, if you see something that you really like, you better, you better grab it. Uh, we stopped and checked for ghee again. I'm making the ghee now. I'm going to have to make a batch here pretty quick because we're getting down on ours. But, uh, you know, I always just look anyway. Uh, nope. There, since I bought it that one time, you cannot get it again. And then uh, the pistachios. I like to get pistachios. So while we were in the store yesterday, I thought I'm going to walk over and get pistachios. Nope. They had a di they had a different brand of little tubes for this super high price. They didn't have that real big bag, the salted ones that I like. So. You know, if I see them again, I'll probably grab four or five bags. Uh, we're going to get this uh, uh, little chiller deep freezer fired up here next month. We got, uh, we'll get get some things going. I got to get uh, get the car insurance paid. You know, they have a here in this country. When when I was in the states, you could pay it monthly, you could pay it uh, quarterly biannually or yearly and all this but in this country if you pay it yearly it's real cheap <laughs> it's it's i mean it was it was like a third it was a third less uh for us to pay it and then uh and we shopped around for insurance companies uh when we got the dealer offered us one and i says i'll take the, let me take the paperwork because they, they give you like a 30-day thing when you get it with this company, and then you could then you can sign with them if you want. It's like a freebie. And then, uh, so, called them up and asked them for the year, and they gave me this price. Well, I started checking around uh, with insurance companies, and we found one that was about, uh, it was I think it was 7000 a year cheaper. And in car insurance here, guys, it's not like the United States. It's cheap. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. I think we pay for the for the entire year on full coverage. It was uh, it's seventeen thousand. I think this last bill. Now, when it was up, I started looking for other companies to try to see if I if there was a better deal because I don't have to stay with these guys. You know, I'll just get a different one. But when we started checking to the other companies, it's the coverage. Uh, the coverage on this one is is much better. Uh, so I thought, okay, we'll we'll stick with them, even though it was just a little bit more, a couple thousand more than this than the cheapest one we found. But but uh, when I started comparing them like apples to apples, it was apples to oranges because that other company didn't didn't cover some of the things. You know, like uh, uh, one of the things it didn't cover was damage if the car is sitting somewhere. So I was like, mm, that's no good. So uh, we got to go down and pay that too this coming month. And I'll just pay it for out for the whole year, get it over with. And we got our Phil Health. We got to go get taken care of too. That's that's due up again. So, but I see my sweetie starting to get up. I see the light come on. I'm gonna go in and greet her this morning. And uh, you guys, you all take care. Don't forget to pray for each other. And this is Rick Shaw out.